On to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. Isaiah chapter 34. Thirty-five, thirty-five. Sorry, Isaiah thirty-five. From verse four, Isaiah thirty-five, from verses four. Read verses four and five, and then we go to Revelations eight. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Revelations chapter 8, verse 1. Revelation chapter 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. May the Lord God add blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to be amongst the saints in the presence of the Lord. This evening, for a brief while, I want us to look at the message, the anniversary of his coming. The anniversary of his coming. On 28th of February 2024, it became 61 years, 61 years since the Lord returned, 61 years, because the Lord returned on 28th of February 1963. So this year, made it 61 years since the Lord returned. And I want us to commemorate the anniversary of his return. It is something to celebrate. You know, one of the ways we celebrate what God did for us on the cross is the observance of the physical ordinance called the communion, or what we call the Lord's Supper. You know, the Bible said, you do shew the Lord's death when you take the communion. You do shew the Lord's death until he comes. So we keep taking the communion. Is that right? We do not believe for one moment that it should not be observed. You know, something great that he did for us, he told us to constantly remember it. And the way the Lord acknowledges that we remember what he has done, a tremendous achievement, something that took him great pains to lay down his life, to be made stark naked, and then hung on the cross. And the scripture declared that cost is the one that hangs on a tree. So he was cursed. So he said the only way he will acknowledge that we remember what he has done is when we observe the communion service. And to think that a lot of people today have, have come to the conclusion that it is no longer necessary tells us a lot. Tells us a lot. 
they've come to the conclusion that we do not need even water baptism in Jesus name and the Bible told us the importance of all of these physical ordinances you know so to observe the communion service is even something we do for him you know when somebody does something great for you and you constantly remember you constantly remember it means that you appreciate what he has done the person will feel happy and so we have to constantly observe the Lord's Supper or what we call the communion service because we at that point in time acknowledge that he gave he laid down his flesh for us his blood was split for on our behalf and it was it was what he, he did to pay the price of redemption and so I believe also too that something that was also great that the Lord did for us was when he returned in 1963 according to his promised word and I believe that it is something that we should commemorate we should remember we should not forget how great an event that occasion was if you recall in Revelation 5 John wept you know the challenge went forth almost in the month of December 1962 who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals and the Bible told us in Revelation 5 that no man was found worthy no one was worthy nobody was worthy neither in this realm or in the realms beyond the curtain of time nobody was found worthy and John wept he wept because the opening of the book and losing of the seal is what returns to man absolute right and proof of ownership of the earth because if you recall when man lost ownership of the earth no man could live up to one day he said the day you eat of that tree that day you will die so it meant that even though Jesus gave his life on the cross of Calvary that wasn't enough to grant man the right of the ownership of the earth that was not enough to open the doors of the millennium that was not enough for man to live up to a thousand years in fact from the time Jesus gave his life the lifespan of man keeps reducing is that right it keeps reducing so brother Bram told us about three mystery secrets that was going to make this possible and he said the first thing God did was to reveal himself in Jesus and so if you recall what God effectively did was to make a covenant with himself and so Jesus which was God in another form represented all of the human race and so that's why when he carried the cross up the Mount of Calvary and was eventually lifted between heaven and the earth and was stuck naked nailed to the cross when he did that he was representing all of the human race and so he took upon himself all sin all guilt upon himself and so when God looked at him the prophet said God could not behold him and so Jesus said the logos why have you forsaken me the logos the logos why have you forsaken me he said God couldn't look at him and so he was judged on the cross in fact not only that he was his soul went to hell for that but in all of that the redemption program began because when he went to hell it was a trick on the devil so God used death to trick the devil and so Jesus went to hell and he preached to the souls that were in prison is that right if you recall this was the first time that a soul of God in Theophany was going to the hell if you recall in our teachings um, during the Sunday services we said uh, that a lot of Theophanies have gone to those regions but none of them had gone to that region that was a soul of God we saw in the case of Samuel in the case of all of them great um, um, fathers of faith 
when they died, they, they, were, they were not yet converted. Even though in their theophanies, they were not yet converted. So they couldn't even set captivities or those that were in captivity free. They couldn't. But it was only Jesus because this was the very soul of God. So it was a trick. He used death to get himself to hell. And that's why, you know, when you often say somebody can use one stone to kill two beds, God is the master of that. <laughs> when you talk about somebody using one stone to kill two beds, God is the master of that. He can use one event to achieve multiple things at the same time. So in giving his life on Calvary, he paid the price of redemption. Also, in giving his life on Calvary, he found a way to trick the devil and himself went to hell. It wasn't the first that went there, but it was the first that went there as a conqueror. Is that right? It was the first that went there as a conqueror. Many, they've been going there, but they couldn't go there as conquerors. So when God does something, he can achieve multiple things in just one thing he has done. If you check your life, he does that many times. Sometimes God can allow an arrow to eat you. You may be thinking about your pains and your and the injury and the embarrassment and all of the things you will suffer. But there are so many things that God wants to achieve that you do not yet know. That is why one of the safest things to do is to find your way into scripture. Is to make sure that you are in scripture. Is that right? And so of course when Jesus went to hell, there was already a scripture that said he would go there. I'm sure Satan knew of that scripture, but he must have been laughing because many people have come to hell and they couldn't fulfill what the scripture said would be fulfilled and that's why the bible said if he had known he would not have killed the prince of life and so when jesus went there he came there as a conqueror and he took the keys of hell and the keys of death and it was because of those keys he was able to set those that were captive free with him he took all of the old testament saints and he quickly gave, because now he was glorified. Is that right? The reason Adam could not bring his, his fellow brethren as new creatures upon the earth was because he couldn't, he wasn't glorified. He couldn't fulfill that requirement. But Jesus was glorified and he could not set the Old Testament saints free. Because even though they were in paradise, the keys of death locked them. <laughs> is that right? The keys of death locked them, even though they were in paradise. So it was using those keys, he was able to set all of his brethren free from paradise. He emptied paradise, is that right? And we saw all of the departed saints in Matthew 27, they presented themselves to the saints, and then in Acts chapter 1, they went up with Jesus to glory, and they entered straight into the seventh dimension. And so we're looking at another thing, another thing that he achieved. Remember, you must be worthy to open the book and to lose the seals. And so he was the first, he, he achieved the first point of worthiness when he gave his life on the cross of Calvary. Because in that form, he became glorified. But that wasn't the only thing. You now needed to do the redemption work which is to redeem the bride. Because we said that was necessary because if not that the bride fell, there would have been no seven seals to lose. Huh? Maybe all that would have been necessary was to open the book. The reason why we add the other, because when Adam lost the book, there were no seals that came upon the book. There were no seals. In fact, as at 53 AD, before the, the church ages began, the book of redemption was without seal. The only thing was that it was closed. And it was, in, uh, it was not yet given to man. In fact, just at the point it could have been given to man, the bride fell. Are you with me? And maybe you could say the same thing in Genesis 3. At the very point Adam would have been able to bring us into existence, Eve fell. You know, Satan, that's how he does it. You know, when there is about to be light, darkness will come out in full force. And maybe when there's about to be darkness too, light comes out in full force. You know, one, one of the times you have to be most, 
most uh, cautious in your life is when things are rosy. Huh? When things are very rosy for you, you need to be what? Cautious. <laughs> because when things are very rosy, there is every likelihood that you will, you will sleep. You will feel that, oh, this is a bed of roses. Oh, everything is going on fine. But that is the point where Satan is locking. Are you with me? That's why you watch, even in a football match, when a team just scored and they're celebrating, that is their weakest moment. Because there will be so much, huh? so much in a celebratory mood that if they may lose their positions, and before you know the other team will score them, because they've, they are so much in celebration. So you will find that, that when things are, are, are so much glorious, that's when Satan comes. And so that was what happened in Eden. They lost their guard and Satan came in. And that's the same thing that happened again. But Paul warned them. He said, when I'm gone, grievous wolves will come amongst you. He said, and they will not spare the flock. John told them that the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. It's already. It's already working in the children of what? Disobedience. It's already working. And so we saw that just when the book should have been handed to man, because the ending of the book to man is marriage. Are you with me? Because in marriage, that's what we see multiplication, spiritual multiplication, the birth of, of seed children of the age. So that was when the book was to be handed. But at that very point in time, the white horse rider struck. Huh? The white horse rider struck. And so the book could not be handed. The book that was to be opened, are you seeing that? And then handed to man became what? Remained closed and became sealed for 1,910 years. From 53 AD to 1963, 1,910 years. It became what? It remained closed and became what? Sealed. And that's why we said the seals came out of the ages. It came out of the ages. You just need to, it's a very simple thing. There was no White House Rider before the ages began. <laughs> is that right? So the, the White House Rider, his journey was the beginning of the ages. Is that right? That was how the seals came upon the book. So what I'm trying to say was that the, 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 the challenge from the voice that John heard in Revelation 5 would have been who is worthy to open the book. And it would have been ended there. But the reason the second element was added, losing of the seas, was because of the seven church ages that produced the seals. Are you seeing that? Are you getting the point? So we now see that no one was found worthy. Jesus already fulfilled the, the first requirement, which was to pay the price on Calvary. But of course, since seals came upon the book, redemption was now needed. Because the seals upon the book showed the fall of the bride. You know, Isaiah 53, when the enemy shall come as a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against it. So what is the flood? This is something we are doing in our Sunday school. What is the flood? The flood that came were the seals. Because if you notice, if you read Revelation chapter 6, he said, and when the Lamb opened the first seal, he said, I heard a voice from one of the beasts. Is that right? So what were the seals? The seals were the actions of the horse riders. That was the religious disturbance. And so the standard that the Lord raised was the anointing of the four beasts. That was the standard. The face of a lion. The face of an ox. The face of an eagle. And what? The face of a man and then the face of an eagle. These were the four anointings that the Lord released to combat the dangers or the, 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 the degrading of the seals. Because when the seals came, it limited the Holy Spirit. But Abraham called it denominational rivers. He said the Holy Ghost could not function. And so we call it the days of ignorance. 
That's why Brother Bram said at the opening of the seas, the full word was born into manifestation. Because once the seas were removed, now he opened the book in glory, he lost the seas on, in Bram Tabernacle. Is that right? But Abraham said, I opened the seas for God. He lost the seas at Bram Tabernacle. So what it meant was that when you read your Bible in Revelation chapter 6, and I saw when the Lamb opened the first seal, that event was taking place on 18th of March, 1963. When he said, I saw, that event that you see in the Bible took place in Bram Tabernacle. So the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 6, 1 to verse 2 happened on 18th of March, 1963. Because that was the day that Brother Bram opened the first seal. If you read Revelation 6, 3 to 4, that happened on 19th of March when the second seal was opened. He said, he said come and see. So Brother Bram was on that day saying, you come and see. Come and see what the first seal did. It was the action of the first rider. Let's leave that for the Sunday school. We are looking at that. So now we see that um, the coming of the Lord is a secret. And I just want to read some of the things that um, um, it's all about. The scripture we read said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Or say to those whose hearts are troubled, Be strong. Fear not. Behold your God. Vengeance will come. Is this our God in the sky? <laughs> Behold your God. He said vengeance will come. What was vengeance? The day of what? Judgment. Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to what? To heal the sick, to set the captive free, to mend the broken hearted, and all of those things. And then it ended, and the next part, Jesus did not read the prophet said, because that portion has nothing to do with his first coming. That portion was the day of the vengeance of our God, which is today. That's why this scripture is saying, Behold your God, he has returned. We are not waiting for him to come. He already came. Behold him. Just like John would say, Behold the Lamb of God. So Brother Abraham could say, Behold the bridegroom. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has come. Not he will come. He has come. Vengeance will come. The recompense of God, he will come himself come and save you that's why in second thessalonians chapter 2 he said to you who are troubled rest with us when our lord jesus christ will be revealed from heaven with with his mighty angels in flaming fire is that right then he spoke about vengeance upon those that trouble the bride the same scripture can you see that Isaiah 61 Isaiah 35, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, the same scripture telling us about the coming of the Lord as a judge. So we can say that what happened on man's sunset, which was the return of the Lord, we can say that that was a man transfiguration experience. Because Brother Brown said that this bride is the transfigured bride. And you know the prophet said there are three showdowns. You remember? He said the first one was Mount Camel. He said the second showdown was Mount Transfiguration. He said the third one would be what? Mount Zion. That's why the scripture told us that, you know, Badiah, that saviors will come to what? Mount Zion. And they will judge the other mount, which is the mount of Esau. And of course you know that the mount of Esau has, is, is, is symbolic of the headship in the mystery of iniquity. And man Zion is the headship of the mystery of godliness. There are two mysteries. Is that right? The mystery of iniquity and the mystery of godliness. So the mystery of godliness is headquartered in man Zion, which is where the bride has come. He says, saviors will come to man Zion. 
they will judge the month of Esau. It speaks of judgment, the day of the vengeance of the Lord. And of course, you know, the troubles of the bride is not the fact that um, you have problem in your marriage. The problems of the bride is not your individual problem. Or it's not the problem you have with your business or whatever. The troubling of the bride is when those who are claiming to be fellow message believers withstand you. If in your walk with God, within the message cycle, you've never had reason to be troubled doctrinally, not by people outside the message. Oh. I see some of us sometimes arguing with those who have left the message. It's a waste of time. Somebody who has left the message, uh, maybe was a former message believer, and begin to criticize the message, and you are, you, are, you, are, you are wasting your time discussing with that person. These are people who, according to scripture, there is no, there is no more what? There's no way they can repent. There's no more atonement for them because they've trampled on their foot what Jesus did. So you cannot even, they cannot be renewed. That's what the Bible said. Hebrews 6. They cannot be renewed. So what are you discussing with them? Leave them alone. He said, Ephraim is joined to our idol, leave her alone. So, so such kind of individuals who, you know one thing, these people who are critics of the message, if you are not careful, they can even mess you up. You know why? They know the quote more than you. I, can, I bet you they know it more than you. They, they are ex-followers for a reason. They know certain things in the message that you may not know. And so if you are not strongly established, they will pull you off. And then you will see the, reason, you will see the disadvantage of discussing with them. Leave them alone. These are scientists. <laughs> they are great scientists within this fair. Leave people who are in the message before. They know some things that you may not be strong in. So leave them alone. The people you should focus on are the ones that can trouble you. The guy outside the message cannot trouble you. He's gone. Just leave him. He's, uh, he's making noise. They have great websites and, and whatever. And they tell so many stories of the prophet you've never heard before, which are not false. They are not false, right? They know the stories more than you, so leave them alone. We're talking about people that trouble the bride. These are guys who claim they are the bride. They say they are the, they are the authentic followers of the prophet, and they are not. These are the ones that add to the message, subtract from the message. These are the ones that you should, these are the ones that trouble the bride. So like I said, the troubling of the bride is not economical trouble. It's not any, it's a trouble that has to do with doctrine. It said that the spirit of Janus and Jambres will arise and they will withstand the truth. They will withstand the truth. These guys who are ex-followers, they, 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 they don't even know the meaning of seven thunders. What are you discussing with them for? They don't even know the secrets. What they know is a peripheral message and you are discussing with them. We're talking about people who are in, inside message. Huh? Who can twist the quote for you and make it say something that he did not say or prevent you from seeing truths that are hidden in the revelation. These are the ones that trouble the bride. And said, he said, to you who are troubled, rest with us. Because the Lord has come. He said, and he has come to what? Save you. That's what he has come to do. He's come to save you. As believers, the things of this world should not be the things that bother us. You see, when, one of the ways to evaluate your growth in, 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 in Christ is to check whether these elements of the world can trouble you. If they can shake you, it means you are still, you are not yet matured. <laughs> huh? If sometimes there are certain that can come and give you sleepless night, it means you, are, you need to toughen up. And one of the things that can toughen you is to stay long with seven thunders. Stay long with seven thunders. One of the ways you can change, you can read so much of seven thunders, eh? but you will know that it has not entered you. How you will know whether that thunders has entered you is when trouble comes. And do you know one of the ways to make it enter you is to bring it to God. 
Huh? The Bible says, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was what? Was altered. As he prayed. That's how transfiguration happens. And Brahma said, this is the transfigured bride. The transfigured body of the Lord Jesus is the bride. So as he prayed, the fashion... Now, I want to ask you a question. What kind of prayer changes you? Is it prayer of request? No. Because many of oh, us prayer is to believe, God, I need something. So when you tell God you need something, we will not change you. I mean, does it make sense? <laughs> God changes you when you please him. So the way you please God is to give him his food. As you are giving God food, you will be changing. And in case you are finding it hard to do this, fast. Fast. Get into, deprive yourself of some things. You know, to do business with God, you cannot do business with God and you are still doing the things of this world. It's not possible. It's not possible. You want to do business with God and every time, every time you are sharing something, you, you must get to a point where you say, I want to do business with God. I want to do business with God. If God so love you, he will force you to do business with him. Huh? <laughs> if you are God's bride and he discovered that you are distracted, he will do something to force you to do business with him. Because his bride must do business with him. His bride must fulfill his desire. They must. They must fulfill his desire. You believe that? They must fulfill the desires of God. Now, I want us to read what the prophet said. Because we believe that our God has returned. Brother Bram said we can see his nose, we can see his eyes. Somebody said, one of these critics said, where is his eyes? If you can't see, that's your problem. But we can see his eyes, we can see his nose. Huh? Somebody said, but the original picture, the eyes are not there. That Brother Bram was the one that puts his eyes there. Don't worry. Leave it for us. Huh? We can see his eyes, we can see his nose, we know he has come back. We are not waiting for him to return. We know he's here. We know. We know he's here. In the message, it is the rising of the sun. One of them say, Where, where's his eyes? Where's the nose in the picture? <laughs> huh? But the brother said, but it's there. Somebody said, where's the angels? The brother said, the angels are there. They are in the, they are in the weak. He said, but you can't see them. Don't worry. Don't be, be looking hard for them. We believe by what? Faith. Faith. Faith is not what you can what? See. It's not what you can see. That's why you can never prove God with what you can see. You see, people say, oh, oh, we have verifiable um, signs and wonders. We have them on tapes. We can see. Look, forget whether you... Look, if God wants to walk, eh, God can walk... The, the camera will not catch it. He will, he will allow what he has done to be in dispute. People will continuously say it's not true. That there is no evidence. And God will sit back waiting for those who believe, who have faith to accept it. God is not trying to, he's not trying to convince the world. It's not his intention. And if you watch God the way it does, he wants to even make them more blind. <laughs> more so that they will not see it. So we don't need to, to bother ourselves about making it clear to them. If you can see it, be thankful that you can believe. Somebody may say you have been deceived. That what you believe, there are no evidence. Don't worry. You are walking by what? Faith. There is something on your inside that validates what we are talking about. You, on the inside, something inside you validate that this thing is true. I was not here when William Brown was here. Huh? But I believe everything. Look, you know, I told somebody one time that I don't even need the signs and wonders to believe this prophet. Only is preaching. Because you know why? Go around the entire Christendom. Nobody. I just told you something that something was fulfilled on 18th of March. A scripture was fulfilled. Have you heard anybody say like that? No, have you checked it? <laughs> that they can say, okay, this scripture, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and they can show you. And you tell me that uh, you can pull me from that. You're wasting your time. Is it Catholic doctrine that will pull me from this kind of conviction? Those who have left never had this conviction. 
Because one way, even though, even though you are doubting it, the, one of the ways to look at it is, is there an alternative? That's the first question to ask. Is there an alternative that asks something like this? No! If you tell some of these guys who call themselves apostles now to read Revelation 5, you'll be shocked what they'll be telling you. <laughs> they were applying that you have a seal in heaven, you need to go and open it. <laughs> you, that you. Read the Bible, said, let he that art an ear. What, hear what the Spirit, not what the Spirit says to him, what the Spirit says to the churches. It's not an individual, it's one group. Because the Spirit, in speaking to the churches, spoke through messengers to the churches. So that individuals in the churches that have ears can hear what the Spirit said through those messengers. Through those messengers. Not trying to individualize it. You cannot. So anybody that wants to come and pull us today is wasting his time. If you like, tell us Brother Bram carried a, a, a prostitute to one place. You are just wasting your time. I don't even have time to debate with you. Yeah? I, look, debating with you is a waste of time. Because I'm not following the prophet because he has a clean life. I'm following it because I saw scriptures fulfilled. That's, that's how I'm following it. So even if you come and say something about him, for example, I don't need to argue with you whether it is true or not. It's not my business. I'm following scriptures. Because what devil wants to do, if devil, he knows he cannot destroy what the person has said, he will destroy the person's character. Huh? That's what we do. It will try to destroy the person's character. We don't care whether you kill the person, whether you destroy the person's character. What he has brought can never leave us because we are connected to it. <laughs> we are connected. So the vessel is not, you know, I, 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 I was listening to somebody. He was saying, Brother Bram is the resurrected Jesus Christ. He was talking all kind of things. People, you have some people within this message, all their sermon is to glorify Brother Bram. All their sermon is to glorify a man. And they say with that they are preaching mysteries. They are doing great things. Those are the ones that we have problem when somebody comes and show them that Brother Bram did something or whatever. We, we are not, we are not glorifying a man. We are saying what God brought through that man, we will, we will never leave it. Because it's scriptures. It's scriptures. We can never leave it. We are, it's, it's our life. We can never leave it. It is the rising of the sun. Paragraph 58. It is the rising of the sun. Please, we are celebrating the anniversary of his coming. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful that he returned in our day. We are so very, we are so happy that we could see this in our day. Paul said, the end will not come until he comes back. Until what? The faith falls and the son of perdition is what? Revealed. The faith fell. But Abraham revealed the son of perdition and then he has returned. Is that right? Because those two things happen. The faith fell. But Abraham restored the faith, revealed the son of perdition and Jesus has returned. In Luke, 20, in Luke 24 chapter 59 verse, he said, Behold, I send you the promise of the father upon you. But tarry ye, or wait ye, in the city of Jerusalem, until you be endued with power from on high. To show that not only did he draw all the benefits out of it, but he shared those benefits. Huh? He shared those benefits to us. So we have been resurrected. The way Jesus was resurrected, so have we now been what? Resurrected. We've been resurrected. So when we come two days from now in supper time to, to commemorate what he did on Mount Calvary, it's a proof that we have been what? Resurrected. That's a proof. He came to redeem or to bring to life those predestinated seed that God seen before the foundation of the world and put their names in the book of life. And yet they are on the earth without a hope. That's why John was crying. He came not only to be the blessing, but to share the blessing with every predestinated seed. Now, if the seed wasn't on the earth, it could not live. 
it had to be on the earth and also gemitized. No matter how long it's kept in darkness, it will come forth when the S-O-N shines upon it. Notice now, it come to share the blessings with us. No wonder the gospel is, is good news. The very word gospel means the good news. The good news. What? If a man died for our sake, that's good news. If Christ was born, that's good news. But never a news, never was there news like this news, that he who made the promise, he confirmed the promise, that he is alive forevermore, and have the keys of both death and hell in his hand. All the gloom was shook away. There was no more gloom to be seen, for the S-O-N was up from the grave. There was no well he will come, or he may come, he had already come. That's the good news today. That's the gospel. Our, our message is, he has returned. We aren't waiting for he will come. No, he has already come. That's a resurrection. So the way he resurrected from the dead many years ago, in 1963, he resurrected from the church ages. But Abraham said that was the bride coming of Christ. He said, and that resurrection is something that is shared with all of us. And so you also resurrected from dead denominationalism. Most of you came out of Baptist, out of whatever church you came from, and you found yourself still in the grave. And you now discovered that you could leave denomination, but denomination may not have left you. And so we also add to what? Not the time we left denomination, we resurrected. No. It was when we left some message assemblies, that was our resurrection. That was our resurrection. We came into fullness of life. That was our resurrection. And that was possible because he has returned. Do you love that? Because he has returned, we also have the hope in us. We are resurrected. Now, Brother Brown said, let's go to trying to do God a service. Are you happy? The blessings of the Lord really make it no one ashamed. He truly loves us. Amen? He truly loves us and we are so happy. We are so happy. We are so, so very happy. So very happy. You know, from the time when, in December 1962, when Brother Bram had that, vi that vision, you remember? That he was going to be met by seven angels. And then until the time where the government began to expand the road. You know, he had been told long ago that once you saw this, it's time to what? It's time to leave. And so on January 4th, 1963, Brother Bram and his family arrived in Tucson, Arizona. Because as the government began to expand the road, encroaching into the land of the prophet, but Abraham did not start to argue. He knew that that was a sign. You know, if it's a normal human being living a selfish life, he will be thinking about how to preserve the integrity of his land. But this was somebody living a life beyond himself beyond himself. So what they were doing, that was not his issue, whether they were taking part of his land. We are not, we, we have no continuing city here. <laughs> you know, it was, or it, was, it was a sign. Go and check your book, where you normally write your visions. And so he checked it, he saw that once you saw the government begin to encroach into your land, move your family. A landlord. Huh? He was a landlord. Pack, go to another city and become what? A tenant. When you will come back, you don't know. In fact, when he got to that city, because he never knew when he would come back, he never knew it was just for some couple of months, he went to register his children in school. The school in that city. Which means that he never had a time frame. I know many of us, when we do things, we normally give God time frame. 
we normally say that by such and so time. Uh, the prophet was not any time, it doesn't matter. Enrolled the children in school and was living there. Because he did not know when he would return back to Jeffersonville. Left his church, left the children had to change schools, left his own house where he was a landlord, became a tenant in another place for the sake of the good news, for the sake of the gospel. That's a life that we must be committed to. That was a life we must be committed to. Anywhere God says to go, you go. Now, on January 10th, the prophet was in Sabio Canyon. And all of a sudden, the sword of the king fell in his hand. <laughs> you know, a supernatural thing became crystallized to the literal. And when it entered the prophet's hand, it fit his hand, meaning that it was made for him. Him alone. Because the message comes to one. It's not anybody can hold it. No, it comes to one. You know, when he was riding that Indian horse, he told the impostor, not everybody can ride here. You don't come and say you can still ride because you have a horse. Not everybody can ride this road. It's predestinated for one man. So the, the sword of the king, which symbolizes the word of God, was for one man. Revelation doesn't come to me. No, it came to one man. When the Spirit is to speak to me, he spoke already through one man. Through one man. And that's how it came to me. Because only that man, his hand, can hold that sword and is fitting. There's no mismatch. It's meant for him, predestinated for him. And so we saw that on February 28th, it was still around that city of Tucson, Arizona, the mysterious cloud appeared in Flagstaff on 28th of February, 1963. Brother Bram never knew huh, that the flag appeared. In fact, I, I read on Facebook, some people are asking, where did Brother Bram say the flag appeared on 28th of February? People are asking foolish questions. The magazine that carried it Life magazine said it was 28th of February. And you're asking questions. Where did Brother Bram say? Uh, what questions are you asking again? He said 28th of February, you're asking because why? Many of them still want to believe that the cloud appeared after the angels met the prophet on March 8th. They still want to carry on with that, with that concept. And many of them have been messed up by these critics, ex followers of the message, because if you're not careful, they mess you up. <laughs> they mess you up. So we have radicals, fanatics, claiming to be followers of the prophet. But we saw that Brother Brown wasn't aware. In fact, Brother Brown was not aware of the mysterious cloud until almost three months later. It was when Life magazine, in their 17th May edition, when they published this photo, was when the prophet knew. Now, somebody said, but... If, if, if it was meant for him, he should have known it. Who told you? Is that the way God works? <laughs> that's the way God works. In fact, when Brother Bram saw it, that's when Brother Bram remembered that they had been there close to the time. He can't, in fact, he could not even remember when they were there. He said, we have been there close to that time when this mysterious cloud appeared. You know, we've talked about the temperament of the prophet. How do you remember? Brother Bram's inability to be able to corroborate events. It was a temperament that he had, and we are okay with that, because we know that that was something that was suitable for God to use, so that we gather critics. Huh? Let it gather critics, but God works in mysterious ways. And so we now saw that on the 4th of March, after the mysterious cloud was formed, Brother Bram had reason to go to Phoenix, and we saw that he was even begged to come to Phoenix to plead with the government. The man that took this picture at the back, where the mysterious light appeared over the head of the prophet, was a critic of the prophet. A very great critic of the prophet while he was alive. That man's son was to be killed. He has been condemned to death to be killed by what? You know that chair where you sit down and then they put the electricity on your head and then you they wash you as you die. 
So that was how they were to kill him. But they, they now begged the prophet to come and speak on behalf of the boy. And so Brother Brown went there. Luckily for them, the government now agreed not to kill him, but rather for him to spend his entire life in prison, which is better. Right? Now, while Brother Brown was in Phoenix, Brother Brown preached a message in Phoenix. And then he left. Because the hunting season was from 1st of March to 10th of March every year. The hunting of the Jabalina on Sunset Mountain in the Coronado Forest. And so we saw that Brother Bram, they had a few more days to the end of the hunting season. He returned back to Arizona and on 6th of March, he went to the forest to hunt. That's when he went with um, Norman and Sotman. And so, while hunting, he was able to get his javelina on the 7th. But his friends had not gotten their javelina. So he promised them that the next day, he would, he would help them to spot where the javelina was. On that morning, when they woke up, just around about over 7 a.m., the prophet heard the greatest blast he's ever heard. And while, you know, it was the same blast he heard in the, in the dream he saw in December of the previous year. And just... Before he could turn, just before him was seven of the mightiest angels he had ever seen. He looked around himself, he was still, his feet were still in the ground. Before he knew it, he was in their middle, elevated from the earth. And they told him that one by one, we'll come to give you the revelation of the seven seals. Return back to Jeffersonville. So his return was based on their instruction. It wasn't based on a feeling. It wasn't based on let me return to my house. It was divine instruction. Go back to Jeffersonville and begin the losing of the seals. If effectively what they were saying is you are now in our midst. It signifies that the book has been opened. It's time for marriage. Before we can send the thunders to you, open the seals according to scriptures. So Brother Abraham had to go back to Jeffersonville, set the meetings, and from 18th of March to 24th of March, the prophet fulfilled scriptures. And the last scripture we read, the opening of the seventh seal, the event happened on 24th of March, 1963. He said, and when he had opened the seventh seal. Remember, who opened the seals? The lamb. Who did it for the lamb? William Brown. He said, I opened the seals for God. He said, and when he had opened the seventh sea, there was what? Silence. In closing, I've told you that this silence we speak of is the period between the coming of the Lord and their meeting the prophet. Because they meeting the prophet was the Lord revealing to the prophet that I have come. But he had come seven and a half days earlier, but kept his coming a secret. Because the Bible said no one will know when they will come. So scriptures are to be fulfilled. No one knew he had come. You know, it's coming, you know, the prophet said when God is to do something, he announces it in the heavens. That was a sign that he had returned. It was carried in the papers, but nobody understood the significance. But there was only one man on earth that knew that he had come. And Brother Bam, in, you know why most people can't understand the prophet is that in relating the story, when they left the prophet, they formed a clad similar to the clad they formed when they came. Are you with me? As they rose from the earth, because on that 8th of March, they are meeting with the prophet. When they rose from the earth, that same cloud, Brother Bam said when he saw the magazine, he said when they left me, this was the same clad they formed when they were going. I don't know if you get the point. This was why when he told the story, it appeared that the cloud was formed. I mean, the one that was photographed was formed when they left him, when he told the story. The reason is because the same way they came, that's how they left. So they left forming the same cloud. And you have brother said, look at this cloud. It looks like a pyramid. Can you see it? He said, it looks like what? A pyramid. Because you remember when they met the prophet, they were in a pyramid of themselves. The mysteries known only to them. And so when they left the prophet in that same pyramidal form, they were going. And so Brother Brown said in, in his story, it was the same. Yes. 
Are we getting the point? Maybe on Sunday we'll read many of those quotes to give the picture more clearly. But so we see that there was a secret. There was a silence about his coming. And um, the silence was notable, but for many it has gone beyond 30 minutes of silence. For many it has gone well, well, well so long. Till now they don't know that he has come. They don't know that he has come. But thankfully, the silence was only 30 minutes for the man that mattered. Because for that man, he was the one the revelation came to. I wasn't alive at that time. Many of us were not alive. Even if you were alive, maybe you were a baby, or even if you were an adult at that time, you were in, in the Marie Clay, you were lost and undone, you knew nothing about this message. But one day, God, the God who is rich in mercy, stretched down his hand. Is that right? And decided to bring you into something that is well beyond you. Something that God is calibrating for all of eternity. You see, the, 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 the move of God right now is to uproot this kingdom. Because the kingdom of the new heaven and the new earth is on its way. And we are the beginning of it. Let us rise up on our feet. We have every reason to commemorate the coming of the Lord. It's also symbolic of our anniversary, the anniversary of our marriage to him. Because now that the book is open, now that the seals that came upon the book because of the ages are loosed, now that the thunders have altered their voices, we have no reason to doubt the fact that the marriage of the Lamb is on. Has been on close to 61 years now. It's been on. Because the thunders began to alter their voices from 25th of March when the seas were opened. When the seas loosed, the thunders began to alter their voices. They began to alter their voices. That's indicative of the fact that the mysteries of the book, we are becoming one with it. We are getting an invisible uniting with it. With our bridegroom. With our true head. True headship, true control. Preeminence is taking place as we become one with the thunders. Preeminence is taking place. Preeminence is taking place. It's taking place. Soon, we'll go back to Genesis 2, which is the millennium. Soon, we'll go back. Soon, we'll go back. And then we can live up to a day showing that truly the earth, we have become one with the earth. We have become one with the earth. Truly we have become one with the earth. When our way there, Reverend said it's going to be the third mystery secret, the second Adam and the bride. Again, like it was in Genesis chapter 2. Thank God for what happened 61 years ago. Thank God. Because our eyes are opened. And we know him. And we are knowing as we, have, we were foreknown. Everything is becoming clearer. Every day is the picture is becoming much more clearer much more clearer. The vision is becoming clearer. We know it will be fulfilled at the appointed time. It may delay, but we know everything is becoming clearer. What we are to be is becoming clearer. We are becoming what we are to be every day, changing from glory to glory.
from glory to glory. From glory to glory. Oh, how we need to be more united with him. Oh, how he how, how, how longs for that uniting where we can be one with him. He said, if we can come to that secret place, he will change us. You, you would not know the benefit of what it means to be changed. Just experience a little change, you will see the benefit. Just experience a little change. The change that takes place in that kind of prayer, in that kind of uniting with him. When you unite with him, it changes you little. You come again, it changes you again. You come again, it changes you. All of this is made possible because he's here. Not he will come, he's here already. Time. 